it certainly sacrificed itself. little trouble with the wiper motors on Roma. Now you see there's a drive gear in here and there's a little worm drive on the bottom of there that runs it and then we have a crank up here and then the cable goes back to the motor or rather the drill today, but there's the motor. So that was driven via here, and then you've got the same, this shaft comes through here, and then you've got a worm drive on there, onto another cog on there, onto another crank. So there's our crank. So should we have a look at this in operation, see what it does? So our worm drive is, is running that um, gear, which is turning that lower crank, which is turning the upper crank, which is allowing it to start that spindle and then wipe the windows. Now if I put some tape on it, you'll see what it does. Now it's only on there just to look like an arm going to and fro, you'll see. So the cog just keeps going round and round, driven by the worm drive. It's the cranks that make it do the actual action of, of wiping and going through an arc and reversing. Anyway, that's working, so there's nothing wrong with that. I think we need to look at the motor next. So on the end of the motor, we've got this spline drive here, and that corresponds with this spline drive in there, doesn't it? See? which is what we've just been using the drill to run. So that goes into there like that. You lock the drive in and then you can do this up. But anyway, we've separated that off. We know this, we know this is all right. We know that wheel box is okay and all that is good. I know this isn't seized up because I, I felt the end float on it, but I've cleaned all these up in the past. So let's have a look at this. So we've got a motor, we've got that drive going through the motor out to here, to, then we'll have another wheel box in here. These electrical connections here are to do with the parking of where, you know, when you turn the wipers off and they'll park in a certain position, that allows it to cut off for that, which is why you have all these weird connectors to it. So, um, yeah, that's connected to there to do with the parking. This is connected up to the switch to do with the different speeds. And so that's that. And then we've got our crank mechanism there, haven't we? These can be, you know, do with oiling because this sometimes, because it's in that um, plenum area, can get damp into them and seize up. So it's worth, you know, putting some oil on these when you've got it apart. And again, this spindle can, can give you a lot of trouble. But I think that's all free and good. Let's have a look. I don't know if you can feel that, but I, you see that, but I can feel a bit of movement on that. So that's that. So what we're looking at is if we drive this, turn this round, it should make that work. Nothing's happening. Okay, let's have a look in here then. I reckon it sheared some teeth. Not a lot to see at the minute. Try moving that round manually a bit. Right, let's just look in the end of here, see if that's turning.
That doesn't appear to be turning that bit, does it? Unless that's a blanking plug. We've got something wrong going on here, haven't we? There might be a coupling in there. I wonder if there's a coupling in there. Okay, I've stripped this down a bit further to have a look. Let's see if we can get this off of here. So to do that, we're gonna to have to release these. Got some little washers there. Pop these ball joints off. You can see there's some washers underneath it again. The ball joints feel all right. these back on so we don't lose them. I know these feel like the things that will try and ping off, don't they? I see it's on. Right, I mean that feels nice and free, doesn't it? There's no problem with that one. So let's get this undone, see what we got. Now, might need to get that off of there. But I'd rather leave that on at the minute to keep it all in time. Let's see what we got. All right, so there's a drive there. Yeah, look, that's working. If that works. Maybe this drive coupling's gone. I think that might be the answer. Do you reckon that's gone? I reckon that drive coupling's at it, don't you? Right, so we're gonna need a new drive coupling. Now I suspect the idea of this is rubbery type thing. I suspect the idea of this is to take the shock out of it, but also to be a sacrificial part in case something, something seizes up. <laughs> it's certainly sacrificed itself. Okay, I don't know where we're gonna find one of them or what we're gonna do about that, but we'll uh, come back to that, won't we? Making a little collar up here. And you'll see what the idea is in a minute. Right, what's the plan? This is the plan, a collar. And then we'll sort this out. So that, that's set up there, 29 across here which is what that is. That's the one I've harvested out the other one. So you can see it's got the nylons in it in here. See, so it's like that. And then it's encased in some sort of rubber type thing. So what I'm thinking is doing something similar, but with this, which is, this is a bit bigger, isn't it, already? A bit oversized that way. So I reckon that's two of those rather than one of those. Anyway, it doesn't matter, doesn't matter. But what I'm thinking is, see, set that up on the drill bit, because they had holes in there. And then I made a little collar for it to go in. So the idea is this is this. That'll pop in there like that. So with that drive collar there, I think that'll work, won't it? It's filled up with sticker flex, that'll go off. And then that'll be it. Then that all fits in there quite nicely inside there. And that doesn't weigh a lot. So I reckon that'll work. And that's obviously what's left of the old one. Which would have been in there somehow. That's the only thing is, how deep was that? Was that, you know, is that the depth of it? Looks like that was the depth of it, which makes that not as deep as that one. Which begs the question, is this the right thing to do? I think we can do it that way.
See, I think these are as deep here. Yeah, that'll work. I'll do it like that. I'll do it the same as that. I don't think it's going to give a problem. Get the idea. So I can fill that void up like that. This drill bit keeps it in check and keeps me where I need it. And then I'm stick it in there. And why are you using it like this? Because it's all blocked up there. So you know if you just pierce that you can get a bit out more out of it. You really only get one go with these, so once you've used them once they're pretty much you know goes off so quick in the tube you can't reuse it. So I do this with it to get as much out of it as I can. And obviously use a fresh tube for a special job. You know what I mean, special job. Something that's um, where I need a bit more accuracy with it than, than you know than this sort of thing. This will work for what I want to do. So we've got plenty on there. Fit the drive gear now. That goes in there on that spline, and that one's going to go there, and that should do it. You're obviously, you're going to have that little rubber concertina cover, but that can come later. We just want to trial fit things. So, I've got the arms on just to um, see where they sit. They obviously need to be timed to one another. You can do that on the car to a degree. So that's the feed to the motor, the different speeds and so on. And that one's gonna do our self-canceling. So that's gonna tell us where the wipers should stop. So we put them together. Looks like we need a bit of clean them up a bit, but anyway. So we could power it up and try it and connect that one to it. I won't do it with the arms on because obviously we'll end up emitting things. Just going to run it up to test it. So we've got these two on here, cable ties, just to represent the wipers. So we've got two earths on here, one permanent live. That will go to the park, to allow the thing to park. And then we'll have a switch live just to turn it on. So let's see what it does. So there you are, that's working nicely. Feels all right. And then if you take the live away, they will park. And let's say that's down to this bit. Yeah, so it's the parking, it's this parking switch that allows them to go back to rest as it were. And obviously this has to be timed to that one but we can, do, we can double check that on the car. That's part of why you can undo that one. So as long as we have this in, the, in the, the right position to start with, we can then connect it up to this one. And this should be parked because it's all preset, isn't it, via the parking switch. So let's go and put it on the car, see what we got. But something worth looking at whilst you're in amongst here is that underneath these brackets here, where you're bolted onto, they have holes underneath there for the plenum. Sorry, well, this is the plenum. This is what you call the plenum. And this fills up with water because it all comes through here. You see through this grill on the front of the car. So your fresh air comes in through there. And then obviously all the rain will come in through there. So all the, all the air comes into here. And then the idea is that it goes into here into your heater box. So that's where your ventilation all goes into that one. And obviously that's higher than this. So if any rain gets in here, it goes into these areas here and it shouldn't get high enough to go into there. 
and it should leak out through these little holes. And the holes are underneath here. And of course it gets all blocked up with mud and leaves and things like that, you know, which is big drama and then you end up with it everywhere and rotting it all out. But of course underneath this area is the inside of the car, the footwells. So if you look in the footwell, and we look up in here, you see this pipe. That pipe goes up there, you see? Looks like a bit of a washing machine thing, but that is the proper thing, certainly on the Series 1. I've even put the proper clips on it. That goes across here, and then drains out on top of the transmission tunnel, effectively, or through the transmission tunnel onto the top of the gearbox. But anyway, that's, that's where it goes. All the water has to go in through there and out again. If we have a look at the other side, I'll show you where it goes on the other one. So again, it's underneath that bracket. I mean, it's a really silly idea because you can't see them, but it's under there. So you need to blow it out or do something with it, check it. And again, you see, it's that tube there. And there it is going up to the bulkhead area there. Then it comes out and this one goes just out sort of in a wing, just in the engine bay there. Oh, actually, I think that might be a just outboard of the engine bay. That one might go out in a wing. Might let's have a look under there. Anyway, it's worth checking it, blowing them out with um, you know with some compressed air if you can. Yeah, there's the other end of it. See, see there. And then he's that wiring thing, this, this little thing, by the, and there's the steering box. See, it comes out of that thing there. So, yeah, really silly idea. Uh, but it, it works until it blocks up. So check that whilst you've got all this lot out, which I've already done, so that's fine. Now, the other thing, another thing to do is we've got a cover for this. So that's the cover. So that goes onto that bit there, like that. Then these clips go underneath it. So that all goes on it. These are quite often missing. Well, this is just made out of some vinyl. My trimmer made this. It originally, they're like a plasticky thing, a little bit like sort of um, what you use for damp course in building or something. I don't really know what it is. I haven't been able to find the correct material, but this, this, this is good and this will do it. That's going back together. Now make sure you put loads of grease on these, these ones that go in here, roughly copper grease. Uh, and the reason is because it goes into that plenum and it all gets water in there so they'll seize up. The next time you come to get it out they'll snap off, they get all seized up. Order is restored. done.